Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I'm glad to see you again. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to perform and interpret paired sample t-test in XPSS. My name is Tito Ken and this is Tito Ken Math Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. But before I go into the demonstration, let me quickly give you a brief synopsis. Paired sample t-test is a statistical procedure that compares two means from two measurements of the same sample or from two related groups on the same continuous dependent variable. The purpose is to determine whether there is statistical evidence that the mean difference between the pretest and the post-test scores or between paired observations is statistically significantly different from zero. That means paired sample t-test is a test that determines if certain treatment or intervention to certain sample is effective. This kind of experiment can commonly be referred to as before and after design, or repeated measure design, or paired sample design. So if the difference between the pretest and the post-test scores, or between the paired observations is negative, then we can say the treatment or intervention had effect. Otherwise, no effect if the difference is positive. Therefore, Paired sample t-test puts into account this difference between the means of the paired observation to determine whether the treatment or intervention given to a sample is statistically significantly effective. This is how your data should be set up in XPSS, and it must include two dependent continuous variables represented in columns as you can see. The first column here is the participant. The second column is the weight before treatment, or call it pretest. And the third column is the weight after treatment, or you can call it post-test. This data consists of 30 paired samples, as you can see. I have already loaded this data into XPSS, as you can see. And if you don't know how to do so, please see my videos on Introduction to XPSS for Beginners, where I demonstrated how to load data into XPSS. The link to the videos are given in the description below. However, for your data to be valid for this test, the data must satisfy the following assumptions. 1. The dependent variable must be continuous variable, measured at interval or ratio level. 2. The observation should be independent of one another. 3. The dependent variable should be approximately normally distributed. And 4. The dependent variable should not contain any outliers. Since our dependent variables satisfy all four assumptions, let's now state the hypothesis that we are testing for. The null hypothesis states that the difference between the pair sample means is equal to zero. In other words, there is no difference and the treatment is ineffective. Why the alternate hypothesis states that the difference between the pair sample means is not equal to zero. In other words, there is difference and the treatment is effective. Now, let's perform the pair sample t-test. To begin, let's first identify the difference between the pair sample. That is, let's find the difference between the weight before treatment and the weight after treatment, and insert the difference as a fourth column in this dataset. To do that, I will go to the menu bar and click Transform. From the drop-down options, I click Compute Variable to open the Compute Variable dialog box, as you can see. In the target variable empty space, I will give the new column a name here. Let's call it difference. Now, I click on weight before treatment, and then I click the transfer arrow key to move it to the numeric expression box on the upper right side. Then I click on the minus sign, and then I moved the second variable wait after treatment to the numeric expression box to sit just after the minus sign. This way, I now have wait before treatment minus wait after treatment in the numeric expression box, as you can see. Now, I click OK to generate a new column of data called difference. This column shows the difference between the wait before and the wait after the treatment had been administered. Under this column, there are negative and positive values. The negative values indicate where the treatment was effective, and the positive values indicate where the treatment was ineffective. 
But generally, since there, there is majority of negative values among the 30 observations, it can be tempting to quickly conclude that the treatment is effective because the poster scores are higher at those pair of sample points. But obviously, we cannot make this judgment until we have the substantial proof from the test statistics. So now, let's perform the pair sample t-test to obtain the inferential statistics. Go to the menu bar and click Analyze. From the drop-down options, click on Compare Means. And from the Compare options, click on Paired Sample T-Test to open the Paired Sample T-Test dialog box, as you can see. In this dialog box, our variables are listed in the box on the left. Now let's move them to the Paired Variable boxes on the right. Click on Wait Before Treatment, then click on the Transfer Arrow key to move the variable to the variable 1 column in the Paired Variables column on the right. Repeat this process for the Wait After Treatment and the variable is moved to the variable 2 column. Then, click the button for options, and in the dialog box that pops up, ensure that the confidence interval is set at 95%. Leave other options unchanged, and then click Continue to close this dialog box. Then click OK, and the pair sample t-test results are produced in the output window, as you can see. The results generated here are in three different tables. The first table is called Pair Sample Statistics, and it provides the descriptive statistics for each level of the variable. The second table is called Paired Sample Correlation, and it provides the person's correlation and p-value for that correlation between the levels. But this second table will not be discussed in this video. The third table is called Pair Sample T-Test, and is the most important table in this output. It provides the result of the pair samples t-test that evaluated the statistical significance of the mean difference between paired observations, the standard deviations among the differences, and the standard error of the difference, as well as the boundaries of the confidence interval around the mean difference. The table also provides the t-value, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value or the significance level are two tiered that helps to decide whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. From the first table, the pretest and the post-test score have different amount of mean values. That is, for the weight before treatment or pretest score, the mean value is 46.90, while the mean value for the weight after treatment or the post-test score is 52.07. The values of their standard deviations are relatively close, as you can see. Now, from the pair sample t-test table, the mean difference is minus 5.167, which by the presence of the negative sign implies there is effectiveness in the treatment administered because the post-test score is greater than the pre-test scores, which means we can be liable to quickly reject the null hypothesis. But the questioner is, do we have sufficient justification to reject the null hypothesis? Or is there statistical evidence that the mean difference between the pretest and the post-test scores is statistically significantly different from zero? To answer this question, we will make inferential judgment in three different ways from the pair sample t-test table of results. That is, we will look at the t-value, the p-value, and the 95% confidence interval of the difference to reach our judgment. Now, one, if the t value is greater than the critical value, then the mean difference is statistically significantly different from zero. But from the inferential statistics, the t value is 6.004. The negative sign here is an indication that the post test is greater than the pre test. And the critical value is 2.045. This means the t value is greater than the critical value. Therefore, the mean difference of minus 5.167 is statistically significantly different from zero. On the other hand, the larger the t value, the more pronounced the difference between the pair samples, and the smaller the probability that this difference occurred by chance. As you can see, the t value is large, and consequently, the difference between the pair samples is large also. Then, this difference could not have happened by chance, but 
did happen because the treatment was effective. Now two, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then the mean difference is statistically significantly different from zero. From the inferential statistics, the p-value or the calculated significance level at 2 tate is 0 0.000 as you can see. That is, p-value is less than 0 0.05. Therefore, the mean difference of minus 5.167 is statistically significantly different from zero. Three, if the lower and upper interval values of the 95% confidence interval of difference have the same signs and neither crosses zero or includes zero, then the mean difference is statistically significantly different from zero. And from the inflation statistics, the lower and upper intervals of the 95% confidence interval of the difference have values that are both negative signs, which means they do not cross or include zero because they are both on the same side of zero. Therefore, by this judgment, the mean difference of minus 5.167 is statistically significantly different from zero. We can therefore conclude that there is statistically significant difference between the pretest and the post-test scores or between the weight before treatment and the weight after treatment. So we will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis because the treatment administered was effective. The pair sample t-test result can be reported like this in APA style. Please pause the video to read through. But right now, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we begin to send you notifications every time I publish new and useful video content. Subscription is free. If you have any comment, please leave your comments in the comment section below and I will try to respond to them as quickly as possible. If there's a video you want me to make, please also let me know in the comment section and I will develop it and post it here for your view. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.